We are back at Chack's house just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. This is going to be a major project. They put down a lot of clay to pack it in. It's just simply not holding water. That's a problem. But we have a lot of work to do before everybody even gets here. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. We are back at Chack's house just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, checking out this incredible water feature that we built three years ago now, which is just unbelievable to me. We're going to do a walkthrough with John right now. Why don't you show us around this project, John, and then we'll go take a okay. look at the new one. Sounds good. So we've been doing the maintenance on this project for the last two and a half years or so since we constructed it initially. You know, they built it to where the filtration is oversized, so it's pretty much taking care of itself. Occasionally in the early spring, we'll get some algae blooms, so we'll get some string algae, some fuzzy stuff growing up there, but honestly, that's okay. We just go in and take it out, but they don't overfeed the fish. There are not too many fish in here, over filtered, so, you know, it's it's pretty much maintaining itself. We do come in, especially this time of year, there are a lot of trees, sweet gums, and things like that, so we are taking out a lot of the leaves, but whenever we designed this initially, they built in this intake bay on the side 90% of the, all the leaves get sucked into that spot so it's pretty easy just to get that out some leaves will get stuck in there but you know that's part of that and then also papyrus and other plants like that will come in and cut that back in the fall and winter as well the way they built it I'm telling you pretty much just taking care of itself it was an incredible project it's always great to come back and see everything as it's been dialed in over the years and it, it really looks good and thankfully we don't have to do any major changes here so right. why don't we take a walk down over here and check out this project because we got a lot of work in front of us we do starting with this the pathway <laughs> starting with the pathway Pathway. It's a continuation of the pathway that we originally did. Right. The challenge that we both see is it's perfectly straight. It doesn't fit with this naturalistic kind of an area. So we're going to want to maybe widen it out, maybe get some more twists and turns and things like that inside yeah, of this. 100%. This is going to be a major project. So this, we have some serious, serious work that we have to do. Number one, you sent us some videos a few months ago now. There was a little bit more water, but you said this fluctuates a lot. Yeah, since we're over here doing the weekly maintenance on this guy, we had the opportunity to see what's going on around the property. So about a year or so after we installed the other one, I guess we planted that bug, that seed. <laughs> hey, water features are great. They wanted to have an earth bottom pond. I think originally they wanted to have maybe some crappie and bluegill bass, things like that in, mm -hmm. in here. So they had some guys come in, they excavated it. They put down a lot of clay to pack it in. It's just simply not holding water. And there was a freshwater spring that came through here. It's a little skinny, narrow path where a natural yep. spring upwells and trucks on down the line. They're trying to utilize that mm. even in the rainy season yeah it's still not holding water that's a problem it's just a big muddy mess we yeah. haven't had rain here in a week but what are y'all's y'all's plans and thoughts as, as far as what you want to do with the space what I want to do is do a waterfall kind of in this back corner get rid of this just big blob of a shape and actually kind of get some twists and curves and a little bit more interest and it will draw people in the shoreline is where people interact so by having lots of twists and curves you actually get more shoreline to actually interact with from pathways, bridge crossings, landscaping beds, and things like that. So it's gonna give us a lot more room. So we just met with Jay a few minutes ago, and we have a bunch of new ideas now, so we're gonna probably incorporate some more bridges, but they're gonna add in more putting greens and trick shots and things like that. <laughs> he's laughing, he's having a good time. Which is really what's gonna make this project really unique. So we wanna get Shaq outdoors, we wanna get him engaged with everything. And with having the putting greens and doing some of these other things, I think he's gonna spend more time out here. He's gonna start out by the tree house, he's gonna enjoy the koi pond, he's gonna work his way over here, which is a massive feature. It's just gonna be more interactive. The trick shots, the putting greens, and they're talking about doing that zip line going across, which is... It's gonna be insane. And maybe a, a <laughs> DJ booth. There's DJ booth. So many ideas. We talked about so many oh. things. I have to do it. You know what's coming. Can you dig it? Gosh. But reality has to come in. So all those things are great. Those, all the bells and whistles. But we have a lot of work to do before everybody even gets here. We're gonna have to reshape this entire thing. We gotta bring dirt back in. We're gonna have to cut that edge down. And I've seen this a thousand times. I know you have as well. They basically thought we can just dig a hole. It's gonna fill up with water. And then they threw rocks around it. But the rocks are perfectly spaced. The pond doesn't hold water. There's no filtration. The earthen bottom in Georgia clay, the water's always going to be that color. So we want to get that ecosystem established. We're going to have twists and turns. We're going to have the rubber membrane. We're going to be able to control water quality. We're going to have wetland filtration system, pumping systems, waterfalls. The whole thing will be more artistically put together. There's a natural valley that curves through there. So we kind of want to get some of that back, but we want to accentuate some areas. So the area over here where the, where the current seating area is at, 
build that section up, get a nice waterfall. So again, there's going to be a lot of shaping. And then the other thing that's going to be a challenge is we have that groundwater issue. So the spring that they right. have here is good from one standpoint and bad in another. So we're going to have to come up with a drainage system underneath our liner. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems. So that's going to have to be figured out. So drain this, reshape, put in a drainage system, take all this existing stuff, stockpile it, take out fence panels, open areas up for rock deliveries, dirt deliveries. We got a lot of things to make happen. Everybody stay tuned. This is going to be one incredible transformation. We got skid steers, so Kyle and Garth just arrived. Koi Force One. We have a mini excavator skid steer, and then we also have our other delivery. Perfect timing. And we are getting ready to start Shack 2.0. chaos has officially begun now we have to start the deconstruction process this is coming out all this edging is coming out all of these rocks around the entire perimeter are coming out and we have to reshape this pond into more of a serpentine type of a shape big concern that we have here is groundwater it's a blessing and a curse so it's nice to have access to groundwater your trees and all your big stuff do really really well because they have saturated soils for us doing a pond system like this if you're doing a earth and bottom pond this is the results that you're going to have it's going to always have that clay type of a look what we want to do is deliver him a good clean pond so what we're going to do is put in a geotextile membrane and then our rubber membrane on top of that that will actually create a watertight barrier it blocks the water from going up inside so what happens is we have all this groundwater coming up we have water on top and it kind of creates this this imbalance in certain situations it will cause the liner to actually bubble up i've actually seen rocks the size of cars floating on top of rubber membranes because of the power of that hydrostatic pressure. So what we need to do to alleviate that is to make sure that we constantly have a drainage system going through everything, flowing by gravity, as well as a pumping system. This is the number one issue. We have to solve this immediately, along with the obvious things. We have to move all that rock. We have to move all that debris. We have to make things happen here. But this is the stuff that's really concerning to me, and that's going to be next on the list. We are making incredible progress. All of our rocks are staying. Equipment is ready, pulling the pergola down. Finally got the majority of the water out. We're cycling the pumps on and off. Well, what I'm doing right now is I moved a couple of the guys with the skid steer and the excavator, and they're gonna start to change the elevation on that back edge. And then I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna start checking elevations with our laser level so I could determine what the new water level is gonna be. And then once we know the new water level, then we're gonna take all of our measurements off of that point, and then we could start to fine tune the rest of these shapes. This is a good milestone. This is the point where most of the water was coming in. We reused the old culvert pipe that was the overflow connecting this pond into the drainage swale, but it never worked because there was never enough water inside of it to actually overflow. What we did was we took that pipe, put it down here in the bottom of the pond. So we had this big long chunk of pipe right at the point where all the groundwater was seeping out of the ground. We took a lot of these large cobblestones. That's gonna allow open void space for that water to continue to percolate. Then it's gonna get picked up in that big pipe. We're then gonna cover the entire top of this with several feet of soil. But we're now we're gonna have an open channel that's gonna allow the water to keep going all the way to the bottom of the pond, only temporarily though. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're gonna go get a bunch of perforated drain pipes. We're gonna pick back up at the end of this, reroute all the way into that drainage swale so we can have a nice connection for water to pour all underground, underneath the liner, and then it will pick back up into the drainage area. So again, the whole idea with this is we don't want hydrostatic pressure underneath the lining. It's gonna allow us to actually control the water quality, and we may actually even pick up some of this groundwater as a fill source to keep this pond topped off. It depends on the quality of the water that we find, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But all I wanna do right now, continue shaping everything. I'm happy where we got this. Now we can cover everything with soil. So we continue with shaping. We are pulling out some of the floppy stuff out of the bottom. We're gonna to try to get rid of that. Bringing in better soil, just multiple skid steers operating as fast as possible. But thankfully, we have a talented team that are able to pull this off. You'd see all that groundwater coming out from this pipe over here. We're gonna keep cutting this trench all the way around. We have more groundwater coming in that far corner. 
And then we're gonna have a trench going all the way through this big earthen dam that we're building right now. And then it's gonna tie into the existing drain pipe. So what we wanna do is have this flow by gravity. Thankfully, it is working in our favor. The bottom of this pipe that we just put in is 12 inches above the bottom of the other one. So that's gonna allow pretty good water flow. All right, we are doing the connecting trench. You can see where Chris is at. We have our drain pipe is going in. We're intercepting all this water, picking up over here. We're gonna put a coupling on, and then we're gonna take the water all the way to the existing drain over on the other side. So far, everything seems to be working okay. We don't have any crushed rock here on site yet. We're gonna have to just put in some cobblestones and things like that in this section in order to make this work temporarily until we can get the rest of that material here on site. Really, really happy with progress. Now Chuck is out here working on that big peninsula, jutting out, again, just giving us curves, just trying to break up that shape. Still having a huge volume of water for 110 feet all the way in the one direction and about 85, 90 feet in this direction. Still a very significant pond, but it's more usable. I love having the twists and turns and curves, more surface area. So that's where the water meets the land, biological diversity, but it also gives that visual interest, which I think is huge. 